In this video, we will learn how to calculate compound interest in savings accounts. I'm Abby with NextGen Personal Finance, and we will practice seeing how compound interest can help you when earning money. Compound interest is earning interest on the interest you've already earned. Compound interest can work in your favor, like when you were depositing money into a savings or investment account, but it can also work against you, like when you were borrowing money for a loan which you can learn about in our other video, Compound Interest Pitfalls. Let's go over the compound interest formula and what each variable stands for. We have A equals P times 1 plus R divided by N, all raised to the N times T power. A is the final amount. P stands for initial principal, which is the amount of money you're starting off with in your account. R is the interest rate be careful, it must be converted into a decimal here. N is the number of times you are compounding per year. So for example, if it were monthly, N equals 12. If it were quarterly, N equals 4. And T is the time in years. Let's try this example. You are opening an online savings account with a $10,000 deposit. The online account pays 1.9% interest compounded monthly. If you do not deposit or withdraw any money from the account, how much will be in the account in six years? First, we must identify and substitute our variables. For the compound interest formula, we need the principal, interest rate, number of times it will be compounded per year, and the number of years. We know our initial principal, how much we're starting off with, is $10,000, so let's put that in for P. Then we can drop and keep the addition of one, which just stands for 100% of the original amount. Next, we need the interest rate as a decimal. It is provided to us as a percentage of 1.9%, so we can convert it to a decimal by moving the decimal point over twice to the left, which gives us 0 0.019. Next, we have N, which represents how often we are compounding per year. Since the account compounds monthly, we know that it will then compound 12 times per year. Finally, for the exponent, we need n once more, which we know is 12. Then we will multiply by t, which from the end of the word problem is 6 years. Now that we have accurately substituted our variables into the formula, we can use order of operations to solve. First, we can carry out what we have in the parentheses so we can drop and keep the 10,000. Within the parentheses, we have addition and division. According to order of operations, division takes first priority, so we can divide 0 0.019 by 12, which gives us 0 0.00158333. I will wait until the very end to run my solution to the nearest whole dollar. Now that we have completed the division in the parentheses, we can now add the one within the parentheses, which gives us 1.00158333. To continue simplifying our equation, we can calculate 12 times 6, which gives us 72 for our exponent. Our complicated formula is now a little less complicated now that we only have two more operations to carry out, multiplication and exponents. Following order of operations, we must first carry out the exponent, so we can drop and keep the 10,000 once more. Then take 1.00158333 to the 72nd power. This gives us 1.12065108. We are almost there. The final operation of multiplying the 10,000 will give us our final answer of 11,000 206.5108. This means that if you do not deposit or withdraw any money from this online savings account with a 1.9% interest rate, after six years, you will have about $11,207. This means that you made $1,207 alone in interest. Let's review how to calculate compound interest. First, you must accurately identify your variables, the P, R, N, and T in the formula. Then you can use order of operations to solve. 
Finally, you can frame the solution in the context of the situation you are being asked to examine. Now it's your turn. You're opening an online savings account with a $3,000 deposit. This online account earns 1.2% interest compounded quarterly. If you do not deposit or withdraw any money from the account, how much will be in the account in four years? Well done on learning and practicing how to calculate compound interest. Continue on to the next practice problems on your worksheet. You got it!